Good morning everybody. It's good to see you all here this morning. This is going to be our stewardship Sunday and I'll be talking about that a little bit later on. I appear to be whistling Jeff. Uh, Andrew, Phil, anybody? <laughs> Help! Let's, let's hope they sort it out and we'll carry on. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. The Lord of glory be with you. The Lord bless you. Thank you. We're going to stand now, if we're able, and sing our first hymn, King of Kings. sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Please do be seated. Lord Jesus, illuminate the darkness in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to your saving love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, unstop our ears to hear your living word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand if you're able as we say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy, 
Your son proclaimed good news to the poor, release to the captives, and freedom to the oppressed. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit and set all your people free to praise you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated for our first reading? <coughs> We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia. For during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For, as I can testify, they voluntarily gave according to their means, and even beyond their means, begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints. And this, not merely as we expected, they gave themselves first to the Lord, and by the will of God to us, so that we might urge Titus that, as he had already made a beginning, so he should also complete this generous undertaking among you. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. This is the word of the Lord. Pardon? Oh, we've got a hymn. Okay. Let's go for it. Heaven from heaven, UK. I'll just stand here and look at you. Oh, 
the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the hearing of all the people, he said to the disciples, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honour at banquets. They devour widows' houses, and for the sake of appearance, say long prayers, they will receive the greatest condemnation. He looked up and saw rich people putting their gifts into the treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. He said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in all she had to live on. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please do be seated. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Every week, pretty much without fail, someone stands at this lectern and talks about the great gifts which God has given to each one of us. The gift of this beautiful world, the gift of his grace, all of those things which we receive, not because we deserve them, but because of God's great love for us all. The gift of forgiveness. The infinite nature of God's redemption to those who sin and sin again. The gift of his faithfulness in the face of our rebellion. So many gifts, so much compassion, from the God who cannot, will not let us go, even up until the moment we depart this life and journey towards the next. And today, as ever, we come together to thank God for all that he has done for us. And to remember, too, all that we owe him for his great goodness. Today, as I mentioned, at the beginning of the service is Stewardship Sunday. A day to think about what we can, in our turn, do for God. I know that many of you, if not all, will have received a letter from Jeff, our treasurer, as you came in. And if you didn't, I promise you, it's waiting for you outside. And that letter is telling you a little bit about the effects that the cost of living crisis is having and will continue to have on our church here at St Helens. Prices are going up, electricity, water and gas have to be paid for, buildings have to be maintained, paper and printing ink cost money. It all adds up. Now some of you if you're close enough, maybe witnessing the fact that my body language is not necessarily all that comfortable this morning. I can't answer for my clergy colleagues, but I'm guessing that if they were asked, some of them at least would say the same thing, that they did not go to theological college to learn how to ask for money from the faithful people of our churches. But sadly, we all know the facts of life. And those facts tell us that our church does need money to continue the work which we do here, to promote the gospel and to reach people with the message of God's love. I wish it was not so, but it is. 
which is why I'm standing here feeling somewhat less than able for the task in hand. It's also why the letters which you have received today are asking you to think very carefully about whether you are able to increase your giving each month. Now, if you are willing and able to do so, that would be wonderful. And it will be a huge help to our church. But this request comes with a very large proviso. And I want to be very clear about this. We all know that the cost of living is affecting us all. Not just the church, but each and every one of us in our homes, in the supermarket, in the fuel that we put in our cars. And what we are definitely not asking you to do is to give more than you can afford. Nobody expects you to go without, to go without the things that you need. And the letter, I believe, makes that very clear. I should not have put my name to it had it not done so. Now, you might be saying to yourselves, hang on a minute, Sue. Didn't someone just read from 2 Corinthians that story where Jesus praises the widow for putting in all of the money that she had? Aren't you asking us to do the same by using that reading? Well, yes and no. Let me explain. There are three points that I'd like to make. Firstly, Although many people believe that widows had a very bad time of it in biblical days, and I'm not trying to deny that some probably did, there is plenty of evidence in both the Old and New Testament that tells us that God had a special care for widows and told his people to do the same. Psalm 68 verse 5, Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. Deuteronomy 10.18, God who executes justice for the orphans and the widow, and I could go on. In the New Testament, in the letter of James, chapter 1, we hear religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress. God has always said, look after those who cannot look after themselves. And on a purely human level, do we believe that this lady's family would see her without food? Or even if she had no family, her community? And even more importantly, can we really believe that Jesus is condoning the giving away of so much that this faithful lady would be unable to eat or keep herself? No, of course not. And that can't then be exactly what he's saying, can it? And that brings me to the second point, which is, of course, that this is a parable. So I suspect that Jesus isn't really talking here about the giving away of coin. He's talking about the giving of the heart. Those whom he castigates give to be seen to be giving. To be thought of as pious, good, generous. And they could afford to give a lot more, but they don't. They give to receive, to feel good about themselves, to gain reward in kind, while still withholding from God all that they could and should give. But the widow comes forward and very quietly gives her whole heart to God without expecting any reward or preference. And I think that is the true meaning of this parable. And that brings me to the third point about giving. We do not serve God simply by dipping into our wallet or our purse. We bring to God all that we are and all that we can give with our varied gifts and talents, as well as with our money. Giving money to help the church in its ministry is important. But equally important is offering our lives, all that we are, 
and all that we can give practically to God and to God's people. My old vicar, when asking for money, used to say the same thing every time. It's you we want. It's you that God wants with all that you are, with all of your heart. If we can have a bit of your money as well, well, that's a bonus. We all have a role to play in advancing God's kingdom. And each one of us has something to offer. Never think that there is nothing that you can do in God's service. That is a nonsense, honestly. God gave us all so many different gifts and talents and wants us to use them in his service. And there are so many ministries in the church. We couldn't possibly do all that we do without our wonderful volunteers. I can see some of you here in front of me today. And each ministry is precious to God. A church that had nobody in it but vicars and readers would be in a very poor state. For one thing, they'd spend their entire time trying to figure out the rota to decide who gets to lead the service this week. Ordained and reader ministry are two important ministries in our church, but there are so many others equally of value. Those who bring music to our worship, they give it a life and a beauty it would not otherwise have. Those who bring the beauty of nature into our buildings with their flower arrangements enhance our lives and our worship as Christians. Those who volunteer to work with children are nurturing the next generation of Christians. Where would we be without our treasurer or our clerk of works, without our safeguarding coordinator or our secretary of the DCC and our DCC members? The wonderful people who put out the chairs for us each week and welcome those who come through our doors. The people who care for our grounds. The people who prepare such wonderful food when we have social events. What about our sacristan? And not forgetting, of course, our church wardens who take on so much responsibility. And then there are the most important people of all much more important than the vicar. The ones who provide us with our tea, coffee and biscuits after the service, where would we be without them? Each and every one of these is a ministry. It's important. And I know that there are so many more roles in the church than the ones I've mentioned. And if I've forgotten your own personal ministry, please forgive me and remember that God sees all and knows what you do. Simply being a member of this community is a ministry. Going out into the world and sharing with others the love of God is a ministry. I wonder what your ministry might look like. I wonder if you've ever asked yourselves, could I possibly do that? Well, I think my message to you today would be, find out. You may surprise yourselves. We all have so much to offer to God. They say, don't they, that once you've said all you want to say, stop talking. So that's what I propose to do now. My message is very simple. As your letter says, think long and hard. If you are able to give a little more financially, then that is wonderful, and it will definitely bring a smile to Jeff's face. <laughs> but do not give if that means going without yourself. We know that times are tough. But that doesn't mean there's nothing more that you can do or give to the life of this church. To give your heart, to give your service is equally important. The question for each of us today is, what more can I give and what form should that take? And whatever you decide, I promise you, will be valued by God. Amen. And with all of that in mind, shall we stand and affirm our faith in God? We believe in God the Father, 
from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated for our prayer. Thank you, Father, for your constant loving presence throughout our lives, and that whatever our circumstances, you are here to support, challenge, and guide us. Help us to respond to your love by offering all we can of our time, money, and talents to further the work of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. As we mark the week of prayer for Christian unity, we pray for the witness of all the churches in Soliho and for the service of unity at the Methodist Church this afternoon. We continue to pray for the appointment of a new rector for the parish and thank you for the hard work of our clergy, wardens and laity who serve us so faithfully. For Sue and her challenging ministry to us this morning, for Simon and Roger and Suzette's outreach work in the parish. We pray for Linda and her work with children and families. Bless all who attend Sunday Club this morning and also the contacts being made with local schools and messy church. We remember too the older members of our church family who are increasingly frail and unable to come to church regularly in person. We pray for Elsie Blissett as she recovers from her accident and for Helen and her family. Be with all who suffer physical, mental or spiritual distress. We thank you for answered prayer and the good progress being made by Angeli and Sarah following their successful operations. Please renew their strength as they return to work. And we pray too for our mission partner, Nikki Maxwell in Uganda, as she struggles to regain full health. Bless her work with sick babies. And thank you for the privilege we have had to share in the work by providing the means to buy some much needed medical equipment. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all who are suffering as a result of war and conflict throughout the world. For each individual who's lost home, family and friends and must rely on the generosity of strangers to provide food, shelter and sanctuary change the hearts of aggressors and raise up leaders seeking to heal old hurts and historical grievances and to work towards true peace and reconciliation. In our own country where there seems to be so much division and discord, we pray for just and fair settlements help the Prime Minister and Government as they deal with the cost of living crisis and so many other complicated problems. We remember the families who now rely heavily on food banks to supplement their income. 
echoing Paul's words, may we too excel in the grace of giving and help relieve suffering whenever we can. God, our refuge and strength, bring near the day when wars shall cease and poverty and pain shall end, that the earth may know the peace of heaven as we pray for your kingdom to come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And we pray for all who mourn the death of loved ones at this time. Please comfort them in their distress. And also, we remember with gratitude those we have loved who died. Thank you, Father, that your love endures throughout eternity. Teach us to live life and meet death in the confidence of this firm hope. We ask in the name of our risen Saviour, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Nia, for what I think we can all agree were some wonderful and very heartfelt prayers. Thank you. Would you please stand if you're able for the peace? Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. Shall we offer one another a sign of peace? Peace be with you all. Oh, there's a hymn. Shall we sing, Take My Life and Let It Be? <coughs> Gracious God, accept the offering of your church, the hearts of your people, joined in praise and thanksgiving, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His he Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Lord of all life, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. We give you thanks because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ our Lord. You made us all each wonderfully different to join with the angels and sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please do be seated. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your Son. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now, with all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit today and forever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace.
Welcome to our Friends from Sunday Club. It's lovely to see you in here this morning. We're going to hear shortly what you've been up to. Really looking forward to hearing that. Shall we pray? Almighty Father, whose Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, may your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And we all say together, Generous Lord, in word and sacraments, Eucharist, we have proclaimed the mystery of your love. Help us so to live out our days that we may be signs of your wonders in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Before our final hymn, have you got anything to say, Phil? I'd be so surprised if you said no. <laughs> it's a you want, though. <laughs> I doubt it. First of all, thank you, Marina. It's been good to see you back to us. Thank you, sir. I think the subject you were given you is extremely well. Thank you. <laughs> Can I first of all expand on what Sue said? Not just your money, very nice, but you as well. In this church, we need a church warden. We need people on the DCC. We need people to make coffee. We need people to help with the Wednesday lunches. I could go on, but you get my drift. You know, there are jobs that we really need people to do. Sue so mentioned a letter from Jeff, or well, if you haven't picked it up, can you make sure you do before you go home? Can I please have the picture of Nikki? Now we've mentioned Nikki the morning. Well, those of you who are new might not have seen Nikki before. She comes here whenever she's back in England. A lady who has dedicated her life to nursing and God. She is the only doctor in Kosoro, which is the only medical place for, for a good few tens, hundreds, miles, whatever. As you can see there, always a small child. Can we have the, uh, the babies next, please, Mike? Now, this is very much a Rotary and St. Helens Church project, but as you can see there, the babies are in polystyrene crates, drawers from furniture, anything that will hold a baby. Some babies have died because they can't keep those sorts of, of cots clean. Next one, Mike, please. This is one of the cots that Rotary have bought. On wheels, a sensible height, and capable of being cleaned antiseptically. The staff at Kisoro, in the emails I have from Nikki, says that the staff are thrilled, absolutely thrilled with their new cops. And some of them are fully convinced that a miracle has occurred because they are over the moon with those cops. Next one, Mike, please. And as you can see, there are quite a few of them. They're not all in that picture, but there are quite a few of them. So I think they're going to have a glorious day chucking out the old rubbish the baby used to live in. <laughs> in Nikki's update, she asks us to give thanks for the end of the Ebola outbreak, the amazing Potter's Village medical team, to pray for the medical centre to grow in confidence, to match their competence, <coughs> the end of the post-COVID fatigue and a positive response <coughs> to the grant application they have made. So really, they have a very, very big job to do. They've not only got their own babies, but they have recently taken on the medical looking after the babies from the Batois people. And the Batois people are pygmies. 
they came with an awful lot of medical problems. Right, change of subject. Saturday night, this coming Saturday night, there will be a quiz in St. Helen's Church, organised by FOSAM, Friends of St. Alfred's Music. Monies that they desperately need to carry out things with the choir, with the organ, etc. I nearly said orchestra, organ. <laughs> Tickets £10, children £5, supper of cheese biscuits followed by a choice of dirt desserts, and you'll like this bit, a bar will be available. <laughs> so Saturday night, 6pm. If you see me afterwards, I'll give you Isabel's email address so that you can tell her that she's coming. I'm back to money again. Can I say, if you have a magazine and you haven't paid for it yet, can you please find some money for me? It is going to end in a minute. <laughs> right, Andrew. This the last. Yes. Sorry, I won't keep you too long. Um, for my sins, I'm also chair of Churches Together in Central Surrey Hall. Not that I do it very well, but I just chair meetings and so on. Churches Together in Central Surrey Hall represents all the churches, and dear, kindly, asked us to pray for the service of unity that we're having at four o'clock today. Um, we've been asked to say some prayers on behalf of the Anglican churches, so if, if there's somebody here who's coming, and hopefully some are, uh, would somebody be prepared to read out just a few sentences of prayers that have already, read, already been written? Um, that would be very kind. Uh, it is an important thing for us to all join together from time to time. Uh, in addition, I think the St. Helens have no longer got a representative on churches together. Dear Beryl Martin played a very big part in this. Uh, so, and I know I think you've been asked before, but if there could be somebody who could come along and represent you, that would be really good. <coughs> okay, we're going to stand now and sing our final hymn, quite appropriately, Oh Jesus, I Have Promised.
May God, who has delivered us from the dominion of darkness, give us a place with the saints in light in the kingdom of his beloved Son. Amen. May the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine in your hearts and fill our lives with his joy and peace. Amen. May Christ draw you to humility and worship and bring you to see God at work and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory. Amen.